The great Aztec uh, power forward Malcolm Thomas, who joins us here in Extra Sports 1360. Malcolm, how you doing today, man? I'm good. How are you? Good, Malcolm. Well, Eight points, and... ten rebounds. One of three guys with double figures in rebounds last night. You were a monster on defense. Three blocks. Really a team effort, too. Talk about how guys stepped up in the absence of Chase Tapley and Tim Shelton, who both uh, sat down with their ankle foot injuries. Well, uh, you know, those are two good defensive players, so... We just try to step it up for them because we know that they want to be out there just as bad as, as us. So we just wanted to pick up our defensive intensity, and I, I think we did a good job of that. You know, one of the things, Malcolm, I you know, we talked a lot about it on the ride here with the women's team to Salt Lake City last night uh, before the game, and we were we were all kind of kicking some things around. And uh, and I know you know Michael Bynum, your old uh, team manager who now works uh, with us on the women's team, and. And he said, you know, I, I'm a little worried about this game. He said, you know, I mean, Chase and, uh, and, and Tim Shelton are key guys, and, you know, they're glue, and, and they help keep this team together. And he goes, I'm a little bit worried about this game. And and I said, you know, one of the things that that I thought, I just had a feeling you guys are going to play well, was because going back to the TCU game at halftime, and, 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 and maybe you can take us back to halftime at TCU a little bit uh, over the weekend, when you guys were up by four and you're struggling a little bit, and Coach Fisher said, look, I don't like to go crazy too often, but I was going a little crazy at halftime on Saturday, and the kids knew why I was, and the reason I was upset is because I had to coach effort, and I don't like to have to coach effort. And I thought him sending that message to you guys during the TCU game kind of carried over to last night, whereas you guys went into this game last night against Utah and said, let's make sure that Fisher doesn't have to coach effort tonight. Let's just bring our effort. Yeah, the the TCU game, our energy was just low from from the introductions following into the game. And, you know, he always tells us, don't make me coach effort every day in practice. And last game, we just try to get our energy up so he wouldn't have to coach effort. And my teammates were just energized and played defense really well. Uh, Malcolm, talk a little bit about the performance of Jamal Franklin. I think for a lot of Aztec fans, that was pretty much their introduction uh, to Jamal. Now, I'm assuming you had met him before last night. That wasn't a new thing for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. He knew who he was. <laughs> he, he's always... In in practice, he's always everywhere on the floor. You know, he works really hard. He he stays after practice, gets shots up. So I I knew his time was going to come, and he did it last night. Malcolm, uh, when you're a you know playing defense, playing around the rim, uh, maybe this is an overused term in basketball a little bit, but the notion of maybe sending a message from time to time that uh uh-uh, uh not tonight, not in here. Um, I, it was the second half when I saw this sequence, but I, I know you'd established it earlier in the game, but the seven foot three center Foster went up for a couple of shots and you rejected both of them back to back two in a row, took them right out of his hands. Is that part of your game plan when you're on your game and defensively around the rim, you and Billy to say, you know, we need to not only protect our basket, but we need to let the other team know that we're protecting our basket and they're not getting any getting anything in here easy. Yeah, um after, you know, the last few games where I was struggling, I was just hanging my head low, you know, feeling sorry for myself and I had a talk with coach and he told me, you know, you can't feel sorry for yourself. You got to you got to help the team, you know, team team. So, you know, I had to get rid of those selfish ways and I have to help my team defensively, and that's the way I can help my team defensively. And I'm going I'm to do that if I can't do anything else. If I can add just one more thing, too, Malcolm. I mean, you talk about the team play and the, and the block shots and what that means to your interior defense. Again, it was in the second half, so I know the game was, you know, you guys had a nice spread. But just a, a great example to me of what has made this thing, uh, this team so successful. You get the ball in the lane uh, cutting through the lane, you've got to look. I mean, you got a little look for one of your little 10-foot you know, jump hook floaters that you're going to knock in 90% of the time. But as you go up for that shot, you're able to see Carwell standing right under the basket unguarded and in a split second change your mind, 
get the ball into his hands. He ends up with the dunk. You have a five-assist game. That's just a number, okay, five assists. But that play, to me, is a great example of why you guys are having such a successful season. I know you and I have talked about this before. You don't care who scores the points. And you've been on a lot of teams in your life, Crawford High, Pepperdine, the whole deal. Usually that's not the case. Usually there are guys who care about scoring points. On this team, it doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. Yeah, everybody is, is really unselfish. Everybody's had their, their time to be that that person on a team, and right now everybody is just basically a, a team, and everybody just wants to win and play hard, and that, that helps us on the court, and everybody is just really unselfish. Aztecs forward Malcolm Thomas uh, with Chris and Ben here on Extra Sports. Now, since you weren't at the game, you may have missed the fact that there was one big disappointment last night. And oh, Brian yeah. Carwell talked about it after the game, and that is <laughs> oh, no yeah. curly fries. For the I, fans. I, you know what? I, I read about it. I did read about it. Yeah. <laughs> now, Malcolm, uh, I, obviously, when it when it's a tight, close game down the stretch, I'm sure the last thing you guys are worried about are curly fries as you're trying to get the win. But when you're up by say, you know, 20 to 30 with a couple minutes left in the game, is that something that ever creeps into your mind? Do you have friends who bug you about that, like Brian says he does? Yeah, I have friends that that give me a hard time about it. They always say, man, you know, we really wanted curly fries, but... <laughs> we, In case we, you didn't we know, uh, if the Aztecs hold the opponent to, what is it, under 50 points, then the student section all wins, uh, you know, some curly fries. That's how it works? 50 yeah, that, points, works. for heaven's sakes. My God, this is 50 points. I mean, this is crazy. Steve Fisher said it best, and I read his quote after the game. Steve Fisher said it best. We win by 30, and the other team scores 53 Everybody gets curly fries. So whether, you know, I don't know if Fisher's going to buy them or if, if, if they send a bill to Ben and I, but you guys played well enough for everybody to get the curly fries last night. Malcolm Thomas is with us. I, I did want to ask you this, Malcolm, before we let you go and, and, and you know, back to work and, uh, you know, next up Vegas on Saturday and look forward to that game. But after every game, every home game, uh, and I've been to most of them, of course, I can't go to all of them because I'm with the women's team on the road, but... You guys all in mass as a team go over and shake hands and high five with the show. And we understand how important that is to you guys. We understand how important the show is. The atmosphere, Viejas Arena, it has just been spectacular. Can you just take me through a little bit of some of the, I don't know whether the conversations that you're having with the kids some of the things the kids are saying to you guys when you go over there after a game and you're spending a couple of minutes high-fiving the fans? Um, they just tell us, good job, that we're, that we're really good, you know. And then they always know about the next game. So, you know, they, they have their opinions about the other team. <laughs> So oh really? It's just really funny to go over there and talk to them. Did you did you get any did you get any advice last night from anybody in the show that you might be able to use and take with you into the UNLV game on Saturday? Did anybody say anything that was going to be worthwhile to help? Um well, one <laughs> one student told me just be a beast and <laughs> that that works for me. Be a be beast. A beast. That's, uh, that's going to be our new motto, Chris. We can. We're just going to be a beast. <laughs> be a beast. Well, Malcolm has been a beast. You guys have been a beast, man. You've given us all so many thrills, and we know there's going to be more to come. Congratulations on the big win last night. Uh, you know, it's nice to go out there and have everything clicking and and just roll to a win like that. But the thing we know about this team is that. I guess you get to celebrate for a couple of hours last night, but once the ball goes up at practice today, it's uh, it's back to work. Yeah, and, and I know everybody's anxious to get back to work because we have a, a tough game coming up with UNLV, and we, we really have to be ready for that one. Malcolm, appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.